The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. <laughs> uh, no, this isn't the Dean Martin Show. But don't touch your dial because you've got a treat coming up. You've been watching Johnny Carson swing that golf club for the past 10 years. And as a swinger myself, I can tell you, he's made a lot of people happy. Now, here comes Johnny's 10th anniversary show. Loaded, uh, to coin a phrase, with a batch of real big stars. 10 years, that's a long time. I'd drink to that. Here's looking at you, Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> Tonight's show, starring Johnny Carson. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen and the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Johnny on his 10th anniversary show. Johnny's guest tonight will be Governor Ronald Reagan, Jack Benny, Joey Bishop, George Byrne, Jerry Lewis, Don Rickle, Dan Rowan, and Dick Martin, Dinah Shaw. Carol Wayne. And now, here's Johnny. Haven't you ever seen anybody in a tuxedo before? <laughs> That's very nice. That's very nice. It really was. Did you see that introduction? Yes. Dino. It's really what a treat being introduced by introduced by two drunks the same night. <laughs> that is really kind of. Are you starting sweet. up with the next end? Well, here we are. Um, people tend to, especially in our business, tend to over emotionalize or get a little overly dramatic when you have anniversaries. But this is our officially the tenth anniversary and the start of our eleventh year, and. Uh, we got a lot of people. This is really not kind of a show tonight. This is kind of a gathering of a lot of great entertainers, a lot of friends of ours who drop by, and we're just going to sit and see what happens tonight. Ten years? Do you believe that? Yes. I have trouble getting by the seventh year on anything. <laughs> uh, ten years. Uh, no, ten years ago tonight, a very frightened, nervous, funny young man walked out here on this stage, and I want to thank Joy Bishop for filling in that first show. Uh, <laughs> Joy back there. You know, you don't always acknowledge all the people behind the scenes on a show like this. That is true. Did you know that it takes over 100 talented people to put a show like this together? A show like this. <laughs> a show like this. Ours is put together by three winos. Uh, gee, a lot has happened in the past decade. Two presidents, right? Three presidents, two wars, 12 different series starring Don Rickles. <laughs> Uh, I just want to give him something to warm up on backstage. Don is with us tonight. Do you remember the very first time? I remember it. You probably don't. What's this? The very first time. The you what? said, and now here's Johnny? Yes. Unfortunately, that was during the coronation of Pope John. <laughs> and uh, remember they threw you yes. out of the Vatican and said, don't come back. No, I'll, I'll never forget back in 1962... I got a frantic phone call, and NBC said they wanted me to replace a big television host who had retired from show business. And uh, at that time, I turned it down because I didn't want to follow Governor Reagan on GE Theater. Uh, <laughs> Governor Reagan, you see, was doing that show at that time. Wish I'd have taken that show. Uh, the governor just, just arrived a couple of minutes ago to be here with us tonight, and I asked him just before we went on, I said, do you feel a little uncomfortable backstage with all those comedians. And he said, no, you see, you forgot. I just came from the Republican convention. <laughs> That's what they got. I saw the governor backstage talking to uh, Ronan Martin. They're his favorite comedy team since Shriver and McGovern. <laughs> That's what he told me. No, you don't have to applaud me. Political humor. Mayor Yorty sent me his congratulations in a Tender picture postcard from Tahiti. Uh, 
You know, a lot has happened in television in 10 years. You realize 10 years ago, if you came out on television, and I would have said, they would have bleeped it. Really? That shows you how far you could go. But now I can say, and they don't do a thing about no. it. It shows you how far we've gone ahead in this business. We've got a great show tonight. You've told them all the people? Yes. Uh, there's no sense, I guess, in going over the list again, is there? You could if you wish. Well, there's Dean Martin, Jack Benny, Dean is already here, Joy Bishop, Don Rickles, Dick Martin, Dan Rowan, Jerry Lewis, Governor Reagan, who am I leaving out? George Burns. Dinah Shore. Dinah Shore and Carol, Carol Wayne. Wayne. Our matinee lady is going to kind of be our official host this night. I saw Jack arrive uh, just a moment, Jack Benny in front of the studio. Should have seen the people going to get autographs as he stepped off the bus. It was my <laughs> sweet scene. So... Thank you for joining us on our tent, and we'll be with you in just one minute. Yeah. Word from one of our sponsors. We'll be right back. Thank you. Do you know that your weight control program can include a great-tasting breakfast? Now, look at this. A generous one-ounce serving of delicious Special K, America's favorite high-protein cereal. A teaspoon of sugar. Some skim milk, an orange or tomato juice, and coffee. And there you have it. A Special K breakfast. A great tasting way to start the day for less than 240 calories. So try the Special K breakfast tomorrow. It's 99% fat-free and 100% delicious. Morning's Kellogg's Corn Flakes time on farms and cities too. Everybody loves them, cause here is what they do. They put the milk on Kellogg's Corn Flakes and eat them all up. The taste is good and pure and simple. Eat them all up, they use banana. Peaches, any fruit will do. There's eight essential vitamins, eat them all up. Put the milk on Kellogg's Corn Flakes, eat them all up. Put the milk on Kellogg's Corn Flakes. We are back. As you can see, uh, as you can see, we have uh, a brand new set just for this uh, particular show tonight. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought I'd be close to you on the 10th anniversary. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's don't start that rumor again. Uh, uh, like you're about to read the will here. <laughs> uh, John Shrumman is uh, very talented stage people. Bill is his whole set here. Beautiful. How about you see this carpet? Very handsome. And the only trouble is, I've been doing that show behind that desk so long. Yeah. You don't know how to, you know, <laughs> you know, whether to sit like this or sit like this or sit with your back. I want to show him this picture. Oh, boy. Um, this was taken September of 1962, uh, just a month before we started The Tonight Show. And our staff at that time went down to Fort Lauderdale to kind of pull things together. And our good friend Jack Drury, uh, who works in Fort Lauderdale, sent us this picture. This is... Who are those two men? I don't know whether you can see this or not. Come in, come in a little closer. You must... You must see these two uh, <laughs> foolhardy youngsters. Try to get a little closer shot of that because I don't believe it, and that is yours truly, leaning over there, and the skinny guy right behind me. <laughs> yes. If you, now, if, you see these, if you see these two people, do not take any action yourself. <laughs> but notify your local FBI office and... Oh, that's from, unreal. Is that incredible? Jeez. Shows you what 10 years will do. Um, we have a lot of people on the show tonight, and uh, I first of all want to thank the governor because I know his busy schedule. He, uh, I believe, took a helicopter in tonight just to be with us on his 10th anniversary. He's had enormous success, as you know, both in the theatrical world and the political world. Would you welcome, please, the governor of the state of California, the Honorable Ronald Reagan. John, I, I remember when we were trying to talk you into moving to California, <laughs> I told you it would be like this. <laughs> you said we would have trees growing and a skyline and everything. And you know, back east, they'll never believe that this is the Burbank Municipal Parking Lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thank you very much for dropping in. I know how many requests you must get to be at various functions and openings and closings and uh, rallies. And uh, I thank you for dropping by tonight just to say hello and, and be with us. It's always a pleasure to see you. Listen, John, it's a pleasure for me. John Wayne said to give you his regards. Oh, thank you. Governor, thanks for 
<laughs> I, uh, you're going to start with me tonight. Huh? <laughs> On our anniversary, you're going to do no. that to me. No, Nancy said to say hello to you. She said also to, um, uh, to tell you that Thursday night in your show, the little girl from Florida, when you were jumping up and down, right. she was all by herself. Uh, we're here at our, our home. She was watching the show in bed, and she said you're lying there all by herself, laughing uh, out loud, and it was the funniest thing she's ever seen. I was up in Sacramento in bed watching and laughing out loud. You two have got to get together. <laughs> <laughs> well, they told me, that they, they warned me that politics made strange bedfellows. They didn't say anything about the way it was breaking up a pair of bedfellows. Now <laughs> Can I ask you a question? I know that I've asked you this on the show. Um, since you've been in political life, and you're probably more now in the public eye than you that exposure politically than you were when you were an entertainer. Do you ever miss the entertainment business, uh, per se, uh, performing as, a, as an actor? Oh, every once in a while when I miss it a little bit, I go up and look at the legislature and have a little laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, uh, I thought I would, and I loved right. uh, the life I had in show business. I, I thought it was the most exciting and wonderful uh, life in the world. But I must say, uh, this has been so exciting, so challenging, and to, instead of just talking about it, to be able to get a hold of something and try to do something about it to help write the script. Right. And to, to succeed in something like, for example, our welfare reforms uh, that have been so successful that uh, you, you know that you're saving the people some money and you're doing some good at the same time, and it, it's, it's wonderful. It's a whole change. Well, listen, happy 10th. Thank you very much. We, uh, I was a little disappointed. I, this is your 10th year. Yeah, we just finished 10 year. We are starting our 11th tonight, officially. Well, when I got dressed up, of course, I thought I was getting dressed up this way for your 10th week in California. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know 10 years. <laughs> no, this well, is Listen, I, tell me before you go any further, and I forget, I, someone that couldn't be here tonight asked me if I'd read you a little note. Dear Johnny, as one of the many who've been guests in your program, I'm pleased to join in saluting you on your 10th anniversary as host of The Tonight Show. It is a milestone that is enthusiastically greeted by scores of loyal fans for whom you'll become a part of daily living. My congratulations to you for tonight and best wishes for the future. Sincerely, Richard Nixon. Well, that's great. Very nice. That's very nice of you to, to read that, and I thank the president very much. That's something you don't get too often in your life, and I know he's probably got better things to do than to write letters late at night. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, I wonder if he was laughing in bed the other night when the girl was... Uh, well, I don't suppose so. I he was if he wants to carry Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I thank you so much for coming in, and uh, we've enjoyed uh, moving to California. We have not deserted New York entirely because New York is a, is a tremendously exciting city, and we will go back there two or three times a year, but we've enjoyed our move out here to California. We, we like the people. The audiences have been tremendously cordial, enthusiastic here, and the facilities here at NBC and Burbank are just great. So it looks like we're going to be citizens here for a while. Well, John, we're delighted and proud to have you, and I know that about New York. We have a treaty with New York. Everything Absolutely. works out just fine between us, and you've deserved all the warmth and the approval and friendship that you, uh, you get from these wonderful people in California because you've entertained them greatly and uh, all of us look forward to that hour of the night thank you i want to thank you again for being with us would you well, give our best to please. your lovely wife thank you. Thank you. well this is gonna be fun see that now there's a place for you to go after yonder what's that you could wind up like this i don't think i would would run for political office. I think office. the state senator I... from California would be perfect. My felt no. No, I'm <laughs> not going to start campaigning. We will take a break from one of our sponsors, and then Mr. Jack Benny will join us. This morning, Harry carried out a week of garbage for his family of four. His neighbor, Sam, carried out a week of garbage for his family of four including backyard barbecue waste. The difference is the Sears Kenmore Compactor. The Compactor crushes a whole week of garbage, bottles, bones, cans and all, deodorizes it, and turns it into one neat bagful. 
the Sears Kenmore Compactor. For men who hate to be garbage men. Sears Lady Kenmore Dishwasher. Gives you freedom from scraping, freedom from pre-rinsing. Because it has two hot water jets that scour dishes. And a stainless steel pulverizer for soft food waste. We call Sears Lady Kenmore the Freedom Maker because it gives you freedom to do more important things. Jack Benny, as you all know, uh, I think can be easily called probably a great American institution. He's a, a legend in his own lifetime, and he probably gets maybe a little embarrassed to hear that at times, but he is truly a remarkable man, and I am... Enormously proud to call him my friend. Would you welcome Mr. Jack Benny? I told you he was a remarkable man. How are you? Johnny, congratulations. Thank you, Jack. Would you... I'll tell you something you won't believe. Yes, sir. I just got off a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I drove the bus. Hello. Hello. I thank you for coming. Well, Johnny, tonight. this is really. I'm so glad I was invited, and I brought you a gift. And I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> this is something you have to show. The audience has to see this. You know, everybody thinks, including yourself, that. I laugh harder and louder at George Burns than anybody in the world. And I'm going to prove to you now that I don't. You always say you do, though. But I don't. You don't? No. Now, if you remember, some time ago, I was given a testimonial dinner in New York City, and you were the Toastmaster. Right. Now, I want to show you a picture. You're the Toastmaster. Burns and I are sitting, and I want you to see me laughing. Can you show this to somebody? Can we show this to the audience? Yeah, they're going right to get a there. camera right over here. All right. Just hold it up. I'm going to, I'm going to sneak a look on the monitor myself. <laughs> Good heavens. You are falling over backwards. Never in my life have I laughed that loud at George Burns. <laughs> And you can have a picture. Thank you. That's, That's right. That's right. Well, Johnny, you. it's just marvelous. This is your 10th anniversary. And when I think how hard you have worked for 10 years, never having a night off, <laughs> <laughs> never being able to leave the place, even for one night, nobody to take your place. And of course, NBC, they gave me a 10th anniversary. On my 10th anniversary, you would have been there, but you weren't even born. <laughs> <laughs> How many years altogether now has it been that you have been a professional entertainer? From the first time you walked on stage for a paid engagement, yeah. received money. How many years? Including everything in show Including everything, from vaudeville, from the first time you entertained in the Navy, or the first time as a youngster. I would say about 58 years. Could happen. Mm. Did you say 58 years? <laughs> 58 years in show business, and I'm getting less money tonight than any <laughs> night that I've ever been. We had to sign a contract for that yet. <laughs> Even for the first professional engagement, you That's probably right. got more than that. I go back, I would say, about 58 years. You said the other night the, uh, the National Conference of Christians and Jews presented you with a humanitarian award. Yeah. And you made a statement which I really think you believe in front of that audience about if you had your wish and something could happen, something you'd really rather, rather do. And I thought it was most about interesting. About the violin, you mean? Yes. Well, that night at the dinner, first I told them, because you didn't hear it, that for years and years and years, 
I've been Johnny Carson's idol. It's true. Now, you've said it, haven't you? Many times. Many times. Then all of a sudden, the whole thing switched, and Johnny Carson became my idol. And you want to know something? It's not nearly as much fun this way. (laughs) I liked it much better the other way. What did you ask me? But you said if if you could be granted one wish, or if God would speak to you, what you would rather do. Well, what I said was, gee, I'm glad that you mentioned it now. You're smart. I like that. Yeah. I said that I love the violin so much that if there were such a thing as a miracle today, and God came to me and said, Jack, You know, he knows practically everybody. (laughs) (laughs) You're smart. You're smarter than I am. If, If he said, Jack, starting tomorrow, I will make you one of the world's great violinists, but no more will you ever be able to tell a joke, I really believe that I would accept it. That's a tough thing to say, isn't it? When you've been getting laughs all your lives, that's how much... You would really like to play uh, That's how much I actually love the violin. But you still practice all the time, and you play around the country. I practice. You you get get better? No. (laughs) (laughs) Let me tell you something about the... (laughs) Let me tell you something about the violin, Johnny. You know I give a lot of concerts. Right. You have to practice even to be lousy. <laughs> just, just, just to stay in shape. This I found out, and any one of the musicians will tell you. You have to practice. I practice every day, maybe two hours, and I never seem to get any better. <laughs> and I give concerts with the biggest symphony orchestras in the country. You know, Isaac Stern once said to me, he says, you know, Jack, When you walk out in front of a symphony orchestra in white tie and tails and your violin, you actually look like one of the world's great violinists. It's a damn shame you have to play. (laughs) (laughs) But Johnny, really, I am so happy to be here and I want to thank you for being the Toastmaster for my dinner. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have missed it. And Jews. You're the Christian. I'm a Christian. <laughs> Burns was the Jew on that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have missed Burns, it. Burns, I'm sure of. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm delighted you huh? could be here. You know, yeah, and I've and said, I I've this, said is this is a wonderful thing thank for you. you to have. You know, on my 10th anniversary, as I said, you probably weren't even born. NBC, but we had all the kids there. We had little Jimmy Durandy, <laughs> little Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> all those, they were Youngsters. kids then, you see. And that was my 10th anniversary with NBC. You know, Johnny, I want, I want you to ask me something. Because... I also think it was nice of me to come down here. Just... And I want to get a break out of this. So before I leave, and I know I have to leave soon, it's, incidentally, I'm always following the governor, Governor Reagan. You did last time. Because I remember even when we were under contract to Warner Brothers, we were under contract to Warner Brothers. Can, can we hold a story? Huh? Mr. DeCordova, your former producer and now mine, is telling me we have to break here for a moment. But then can I stay for a minute later? Hours. Certainly. Hours? Certainly you can. <laughs> We're going to take a pause just for one of our sponsors, and we'll come back. You'll right. stay with us all night if you'd like. Well, remind me what I will. Yeah. Yeah. One of the most delightful things about cats is that they do such crazy things. So Purina Cat Chow rewards those lovable, crazy creatures with delicious Purina Cat Chow flavor stars. The tempting star-shaped cat food in six great flavor varieties. Purina Cat Chow. Crazy. (laughs) 
And what did your bleeding hearts pass when they were in office? A lot of garbage. They put people to work. Oh, yes. They offered Make work stuff. Centers. Raking they leaves. Digging up trolley car tracks. And, and planting lighting. pussy willows. That's, That's what they, they passed. passed. Pass the Pepto-Bismol. If you're having politics for dinner, have Pepto-Bismol around for dessert. Pepto-Bismol is a kind of protective coating between the upset and the stomach. I'm glad that's settled anyway. Now, where were we? Welcome back. If you just joined us, we're uh, celebrating our anniversary show with a, with a great number of good friends here tonight, including Mr. Jack Benny and a lot of others will be out. You wanted to say something about the governor before we brought out... Yes. Next, yes, you started something about... Because that. otherwise I'll forget. Because it seems that whenever I appear anywhere, entertainment or anything, I am always following the governor. Now, I remember years ago when we were both in the movies. And the, we were both under contract to Warner Brothers. And at that time, Governor Reagan was always in a picture where he was on a horse. And I was always with a broom and shovel right in back of him. <laughs> and someday you, you're going to get out of show business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my, my next he guess was is always a, in the cavalry. <laughs> I knew my next guest is a special friend because uh, many times when I am not here, he is as the host. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Joy Bishop? Congratulations. Thank you. I have a <laughs> list of weeks that I have pinched for you, John. <laughs> this is not your 10th anniversary. It's your sixth and my fourth. <laughs> now, I spoke to Freddie and your staff, and they've got me penciled in for the next 10 years. <laughs> I have Thursday, May the 24th, 1976. That's open. October 12th, 1977. In 1988, I had to turn them down. I'm doing a Hollywood Squares. <laughs> <laughs> and in 1989, a small possibility of the Today Show. But <laughs> that's the funny not... part of it is, I'll still be living. Yeah. That means none of us can ever be the number one comedian. That's right. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's sweet. Sweet sweet. Sure glad we're going on alphabetically. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hate to have to kiss Rickles. <laughs> and Ephraim Zimbalist wouldn't get on till next Thursday. I mean, now I must confess, yes, sir. while I wish you the best, you know that from the bottom of my heart, for as long as you wish to continue like this, I do have mixed emotions. I know. I always get the feeling you hope I get a lingering illness. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. I hope to God that never happens. But a thought occurred to me as I was coming out. Merv Griffin was opposite you. He's still on television. Dick Cavett opposite you. He's still on. I was the only guy opposite you that's out of work. <laughs> and yet, from the goodness of my heart, I rented a tux, came over here <laughs> to wish you many, many happy returns. I know you mean that. I do it from the bottom of my heart. I any know. guy that can do this for 10 years. I had a tough time doing it for 10 days. <laughs> well, you do it for 10 years, and I know what the grind is. Uh, I do wish you, for as long as you're happy doing it, as soon as you get sad, though, give me a call. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. I know you mean it. You're welcome. <laughs> I'd like to say something also sincerely that I've been in show business so many years. I've done so many things. And in all modesty, fairly successful, wouldn't you say? 
Yes. I could not do Johnny's job or yours. Oh, I'm going to be a, 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 or yours. Or long. yours. <laughs> I can feel it. When you run the show, if you gave me a million dollars, I wouldn't know how to now, do it. Now, wait a minute. A million dollars, Jack. I Think couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I can answer questions. I don't know how to ask them. And that's my whole big problem. I could never take your place. You open Either with, one. how are you? And then I'm dead. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Once I say to the fellow, how are you? He says, I'm fine. I don't know what to say yet. May I show you one of my proudest gifts this gentleman gave me? Yes. And I, they're really beautiful. And I don't ever wish to flaunt jewelry, because I don't wear any except my bar mitzvah ring, which I got many years ago. But I received a set of cufflinks for acting as the Toastmaster for the Friars' Dinner in New York in which they honor Jack Benny and George Burns. And on one cufflink here, it says, from JB to JB. That's Aren't they pretty? I wonder if you could, can you, they're really beautiful, Jack. And thank I you. thank you very much. Very the only re thing is, I wish you hadn't said it here, now I gotta give Johnny cufflink. <laughs> But why do you keep holding my hand, man? Because I, I love you. I thought you were trying to get your cufflinks back. <laughs> so he could give them to me. Uh, we'll be... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> it's like riding a bicycle, is it? Yeah. It's always there. Um, well, the, the, hell, right the hell with you guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the theater. But first, oh, but first, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Alpo has played an important part in our shows for a long time now. The way we kid around, they've had to be pretty good sports, too. It's hard to believe, but I've presented close to 300 live commercials on Alpo's behalf. Now, Alpo is the number one canned dog food in America. Now, I can't take all the credit. You see, dogs love meat, and Alpo knows that. That's why... This Alpo beef is just beef and meat byproducts with all the vitamins and minerals a dog needs for a complete and balanced diet. Other dog foods, well, if you think yours is just like Alpo because it looks meaty and costs about the same, check the label. If you find ingredients like cracked barley and wheat flour, that's cereal. But there's not a speck of cereal in Alpo beef. Nothing but beef, meat byproducts, vitamins, and minerals. You know, it takes good things to make a great show, and it's that right combination of good things that make Alpo so great. Come on now. Doesn't your dog deserve Alpo, too? My, uh, my next guest comes uh, directly. We're a little out of order tonight because he's taping his special and he has to come over here and then he has to leave. All I can say about Don Rickles is that I've always felt that it was a shame that Martin Borman didn't live to see his firstborn. <laughs> Would you welcome, please, Mr. Don Rickles? Oh, I... I'm here for the rodeo. <laughs> Forgive me for my dress, uh, John, but. Uh... <laughs> I'm working, and I, I had no idea there was going to be a wedding tonight or something. <laughs> and I'm working over at the other network, and yes. I, I couldn't get dressed up for this cockamamie affair. Here. <laughs> but it's, it's, a great, it's a great night. Uh, the president, Don Durgin, is, is that his Don name? Durgan. Don Durgan. Don Durgan, who cares? <laughs> uh, he was in the back in the hall, walking around going, I'm the president. He told that to Re Regan, <laughs> who stepped on his hand and left. <laughs> Governor Regan was thrilled. Yeah, he was very excited to see yeah. you. Why am I talking to you? I don't even like you, Joey. Why not? <laughs> anyway, now nah, I kid about Joey. I know him a yes. lot of years. Uh, I can't wait. But, uh, <laughs> what the whole thing is, for God's sake, let me talk. Oh. Well, listen, wait a minute. Who as long as you're imitating me, his name is not Regan. It's Reagan. It's Governor Reagan. And once he explained that to me while <laughs> I was introducing him, it was practically an insult. I call him Regan, and he says, Jack, the next time you introduce me, it's Ronald Reagan. So I said to him, the next time you introduce me, it's Benny Kabelski. <laughs> <laughs> That's my right name. <laughs> 
I didn't know that. I, I hope I didn't spoil anything. No, for Jack, you. I was rolling along here. <laughs> uh, yeah. My mother would say, it's Jack Benny, keep your mouth shut. Yeah, for God's sake. George, your dear friend is in the back walking around trying to find out what the affair is about. Ah, <laughs> uh, but uh, Johnny, it's, yes, it's uh, great to see that how you, on your anniversary, you sit in a big chair and we all sit here like a group of people in a wheat field. <laughs> you, Sitting there like King Farouk ran out of grapes. The humility in the class. Now that you mix with Freddie, your producer, I didn't recognize Freddie Dick it over. Freddie, over here where the light is. Uh, <laughs> he just sits in the stool going, I'm in charge. Uh, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a great treat, really, to, to be able to be with you 10 years. You know, I, I remember you started with that. You were talking about it at CBS the other day when you worked in that studio. What was the show you had then? I did a show in the same studio you're in now. Yeah. And what was the name of the show, John? Try to stay awake for this. Halsey. You <laughs> can hardly wait to get back to Bel Air and go, I'm wealthy. Ah, uh, it's called the Johnny Carson Show. It's called the Johnny Carson Show. Well, wonderful, John. You're kind of dull, so I'll talk to Ed. Ed, maybe you can put the rubber band on your ear and play Marine Corps pilot for a half hour. <laughs> you don't have to know, Jack. It's making a lot of money for him. <laughs> Isn't this great? I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Jack Benny came up in the dressing room in, in the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas, and that's the truth when I was appearing there. And you were very sweet and kind. In fact, we had dinner together. I, together, I had... Uh, my wife and I had steak, and you had, I believe, one boiled egg. And uh, he does, he watches his diet, and he came up and he said, you know something, you see, I watched you on the stage for years in the lounge in the Sahara. True, Jack, what I'm saying? And he said, you know, you came on with some of the words and the things, you see. And I said to Mary, I said, the kid's got to get killed. Because anybody, you see, that can come on that strong has got to be crazy. Now but today... Now can we hear Humphrey yet. Bogart? No. Oh. I'll do it. <laughs> now you see why I pinch it for him? That was good, Johnny. Uh, it's good <laughs> to see you get that poison out. <laughs> Even on your anniversary, you always got to snap at the little Jew, huh? <laughs> With the trouble in the world, oh. I'm really just neutral. <laughs> Before this evening is over, there'll be more Jews on here than anybody else. <laughs> I assure you. <laughs> and by the applause, Jack, warm up the car, we're in trouble. <laughs> But I, I must say, in all fairness to you, John, it was Johnny Carson. I know you, you, you get embarrassed about this. Uh, Johnny Carson was the first guy to start me on television in, in nighttime form and uh, uh, bring my ridiculous kind of uh, format to the, to the public. And then Joey on ABC followed it up and, and kept me going pretty good. And I must say, uh, Johnny, and uh, very honestly, because my name was like, oh, here he comes, you know? And you were great. You sat at the desk and you had me on the show many times. And I say this with all sincerity. Uh, we know each other. We don't see each other that often socially. I have begged. Uh, but I don't want to sit up in the room in the nude looking at stars. He loves astrology, and he sits there in the nude going, Oh, Venus is sick. Anyway, uh, but... Uh, I don't know, but they're laughing. What do you care? Why does it... Look at these people. They, came, they were in line all night going, Move up, Al. But I just want to say from the bottom Don, of my heart... you should have seen him on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, for 10 years, may you have 10 more, and may you be blessed, really, for being kind to me and mine and uh, my dear ones. You are Thank a good you. I know you mean that. With all of that. I know you mean that. Thank you, man. Now, you got to... 
Don really wasn't kidding about coming like this because you're in the middle of taping your special. Yes, really. I wasn't trying to be uh, cute or anything. This was this was it. And I dropped over the other day and we did a little thing on the show. And you were delightful and I appreciate it. And I hope it's a big success for you. Well, we try hard. If you blow that one, it's Armed Forces Radio for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, Want to hear a funny line? Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thanks, Thank you. We'll be right back with Mr. George Burns after this word. You'll see a lot of great meals coming out of your oven with this see-through cooking bag. Brown and Bag from the Reynolds Wrap people. It cooks meat tender and juicy without messing up pan or oven. Succulent pork roasts, juicy chicken, tender ham steak. And it's easy to use. Always shake a tablespoon of flour inside the bag and it's ready for your favorite meats and vegetables. Follow the recipes that come in every box. You can't miss. Reynolds Brown in Bag for juicy meats with no oven cleanup. You're a busy woman, busy doing all kinds of things today. So let Mrs. Paul's help make those good foods you want for your family, like fish sticks and fish fillets. Mrs. Paul's makes them, Mrs. Paul's makes them, cause you've got plenty to do. Would you please welcome Jack Benny's best friend, Mr. George Burns. Hello, good. George. Hello, Jack. You won't even shake hands with me, huh? Where are you? I can't see. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I resented that picture that you gave me, Jack. Well, John. I can't help it. That's the way I laughed well, at it. You were still laughing at me because you were laughing at a joke that I gave to Johnny. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that you and Joey were going to be out here tonight. The fellas are here to get laughs, huh? No, just to... Pay tribute to someone who's doing yeah. the most commendable job. Well, this is your thing tonight. This is the 10th, 10th this year, is, George. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and Freddie DeCorda told me to wear a dinner jacket. Black tie tonight. And we're all in dinner jackets. And, uh, and I know this is your 10th anniversary. But why are we dressed up? You're going to take us to Chinatown? <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me because he'll resent it. <laughs> Uh, George, would you mind not making Jack laugh? Because every time he does, he spits on me. <laughs> well, I'll tell you how much I love Jack. I'll take it. <laughs> but I'm not going to laugh at anybody. Though. Okay, don't. To hell with him. But uh, Johnny, you've been you've been doing this now for ten years. Yes. I guess yes. it's tough finding something else to do, isn't it? <laughs> you going to do it for 10 more? I don't think we'll make another 10. 10 more? That means you'll be a big hit for 20 years. Isn't that kind of monotonous? Well, why don't you go into radio? <laughs> why don't you travel? Why don't you entertain in, in, in Wilkes-Barre, in Scranton, in Troy, Albany, <laughs> Mechanicsville? All those So that the people can see what you look like. Going to do this all your life? I don't think so. I wouldn't have liked you. Whatever you do, please consult me. Yes, sir. Well, check, check with Joey first. You're liable to finish up with NBC for the rest of your life. Yeah. There are other things in show business. Uh, there are, um... Do you sing? Not like, not as good as you, George. No. I sing pretty good. Actually, you sing excellent. Yeah. And, um... I dance pretty good. Yes. Yeah. I don't dance as good as I used to dance. I, um... I just tried to do a little thing backstage just now. Well, I stepped on the girl's toe. The girl that brought me out. But um, I'm just going to sit here and smoke my cigar. You've got so many entertainers here tonight, so many comedians. You need me like Georgie Jessel needs another medal. I don't think you've ever been on the show where you haven't sung. 
Well, I'm, I can't sing because you've got Dinah Shore, haven't you? Yeah, but I don't think Dinah's going to sing. She's not? No. Well, I don't want to take the edge off Dinah. Is Sammy Davis on the show? Sammy couldn't make it because he was in London taping. Oh. And he could not make it. Then that means I can dance. You can sing and dance. <laughs> we got a cut? Does that mean we're, we got a cut away for commercial? Thank God. All right. We'll stop and do this, and then we'll come right back. After a word from one of our sponsors. Renee, you didn't iron the shirt. Isn't it about time you stop putting up with wrinkled permanent press shirts? Dishes on the bottom. Stop struggling with dishwashers that are hard to load. And stop fumbling with refrigerators that need the frosting. Then stop in at your participating Whirlpool dealer displaying this sign. You'll get a good deal on a dishwasher, refrigerator, washer, and dryer, as well as an electric range, all of which can make your life a little easier. I am Luis Reyes. This is my family. I have a farm in Cibao, the finest land for growing cigar tobacco in all of Santo Domingo. Dutch masters buy my tobacco for their cigars. They buy other mild, expensive tobaccos too, from Colombia, Brazil, Puerto Rico. But to me it is most important that Dutch masters buy my tobacco. If they buy my tobacco, they must make a very good cigar. Here's another good friend and one of the most popular stars in the world, Mr. Jerry Lewis. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jerry. Hi, Ed. How are you? Hi, folks. Hi, John. Hello, Jerry. Oh, this is really terrific. The way this is a whole new look. It's marvelous. I really, I just can't tell you, John, how delighted I am to dress up in a tux at three in the afternoon and drive on Sunset Boulevard to come here. It really is marvelous. You look like the Pope. You want me to kiss your ring? Keep going. It's all right. <laughs> ten years. That's ten right. years. You're the same man tonight that you were ten years ago, and I'm a big fan of the show. You haven't improved that much. <laughs> This is it's uh -huh. so nice. It really is. What a, ten years? Yeah. I, you, I, I, you, I'm sorry, but you are my all-time favorite. You know that, and I always idolized you. But if you blow smoke in my face once more, I'll kill you. <laughs> idol or no idol, that's it. I'm sorry. That's probably all I right. wouldn't cough on your line normally. <laughs> 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 Not at those prices, George. No, no. I'm working with a team again. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. but... <laughs> oh. Sorry what about day. that. It certainly is I... wonderful, John. Yes. Ten years. You must feel totally satisfied. <laughs> You've been uh, shooting a picture in Sweden. Yes, that's right. Yes, I completed the film in Sweden. I'm in the process of cutting it now, and hopefully we'll release it in the spring. Of this year? Yes. <laughs> of this year. The spring of this year? Yes. <laughs> I'd better hurry and finish the last reel, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's a marvelous film. <laughs> Any time you want me to sing, I'll be glad yes, to. Yes, Judge. Uh, you haven't got a violin up there, have you? You know, the exciting thing about doing a show like this is that you get a ch <laughs> is that you get a chance to get together with people that you rarely... We all live here. I rarely see George or Jack or Joey or uh, Ed. You don't see me much either. <laughs> you ever occurred that maybe nobody likes you? <laughs> now, you know, Jerry, you know I just say that in jest he's hurt no 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 there could be a lot of you know there's tremendous truth and humor <laughs> they say and it's very I'll close get to you for that, John. You're very close i must say that no one no one in the world can dislike anyone 
who can raise $10 million for a charity. Yeah. Here, here. Well, of course. I raised six million for musicians. <laughs> I, uh, I have a uh, telethon coming up for I Prickly Heat. My underwear hurts me. Well, I mean, everybody gets up and says something. <laughs> I'm in show business, I thought I'd get up. <laughs> Does everybody know how everybody gets here? Johnny doesn't call, Ed doesn't call. You get a telegram, and it spells out what the facts are. Did anyone, did you all get these? I had a call from Dave Tebbett myself. Yeah. Then I got a wire. I, oh, well, the wire really wiped me out. Oh. May I? I got something in my pocket. A cigar. I'm not going to read this That wire. means we have to. That music that he raised all the money for is preventing me from reading this wire. That's right. That you, uh, we're going to take a break here, and uh, we're going to come right back. While we have the couches redone and reupholstered. You know, since this, since, this is, <laughs> since this is the 10th year, and there's kind of a highlight, at least with this kind of a show for 10 years, what's been the highlight of your life? I mean, really now. Something you really remember. Either you're any of you. Or none of you. Or some of you. No, oh. a real highlight. Uh, a mem memorable anniversary or an honor or... Yeah, I, I have a memorable highlight. Um, playing um, Paris. Paris, right? Uh, to an audience that didn't understand English. And uh, what is the snickering? I didn't finish the part, the part yet. And they reacted because they felt what you were saying. Right, I'm doing. Uh, that that was very memorable. Right. And I knew that all of the folks here would enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> I also had a highlight. Did you? <laughs> Now I've got to think of a highlight. <laughs> That's right. right. It's highlight Mine time. I was playing to an audience in Pittsburgh who didn't speak a word of English. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is tough, of course. Johnny. Yes, sir. You know what my highlight was? What? I told you I've been in show business like 58 years. Right. In my entire career, and I mean this sincerely, my highlight was when my little hometown, Waukegan, Illinois, built a school, a junior high school, and named it after me, called the Jack Benny Junior High School, and you had a picture taken. Standing yeah. in front of it, sure. That's, That's right. right. That's my I highlight. Have I did have a highlight. I did have a highlight. You had a highlight, too. Yeah, now, wait a minute, George Burns has I a, highlight. a highlight. I, I thought, thought a, oh, George, a highlight. you hold your highlight My until George. My big highlight is yeah. when I played the Jefferson Theater. The Jefferson Theater? On 14th Street. That was in, in New, New York. York. And I played there for three days. Yeah. And I wasn't closed. <laughs> That was one of my big highlights. I got some more highlights. Yeah, yeah but Joey's got a highlight. Oh, Joey. Well, Joey, after Let's hold the other highlights for George while we hear oh, Joey. Joey. All those for Joey's highlights. <laughs> the highlight of my life, I mean, nothing, not personal, no marriage, not when my son was born. I'm talking about career wise, was emceeing the inaugural for the late John F. Kennedy. And I had a, I had a line to do. And I didn't know whether to do the line or not. And the last second, I decided to do it because we addressed the president. He sat in the box, and we were this close from here to the camera. And I said, Mr. President, now that you've been elected, will you please tell me how I get that sticker off my bumper? <laughs> that was my... Uh, but I'm seeing the inaugural, and they had some oh, really? great, yeah. great talent. That was uh, the highlight. You took the mind. highlight right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, but you said it. You said it to McKinley. It was the same thing. <laughs> I thought I said it with humor. Well, John Rickles. I think we got a new thing here for series called Highlights of People Sitting on Couches. I think if we punch this. What was your highlight, John? 
I mean, you being are. here tonight. This no, is the truth, John. Career. This is just another this show. This is one of them. Tenth year. No, I think no. It's not just another show. The fact that we did this kind of a show for ten well, years. Well, let's is hear one what your feelings are, John. My highlight actually was when I was eight years old. Um, you had your first affair. <laughs> you knew. <laughs> No, it was a No, when you're eight years involved. old and you go to the John, every light is a highlight. <laughs> well, that's true. If you want to get dirty. <laughs> Would you like to hear about my sister Goldie? No. <laughs> we don't want to get that dirty. No. <laughs> and we'll hear about that right after a word from one of our sponsors. Now watch this, folks. If I can't break this truck, preschoolers can't either. Because these true tough stuff trucks and blocks are made of a new material so sturdy. Watch this. Mattel guarantees them against breakage for five years. Guarantees them against defects in workmanship and material for five years. If they should break, return to Mattel. Postage prepaid for replacement or refund at Mattel's option. New Tough Stuff trucks and blocks. They're tough. <laughs> really tough from Mattel. It's National Bake a Chicken Week, folks. And look what Shake and Bake and the National Broiler Council have for you. A free baking pan made of sturdy aluminum, just right for baking chicken. Now, chicken's economical and nutritious and especially delicious when you fix it with Shake and Bake. Now, to get your free baking pan, just send the tops from five inner envelopes of Shake and Bake and the price mark from any chicken purchase. Send them to Shake and Bake Offer, Post Office Box 3, Bradley, Illinois, 60915. So hurry and shake and bake a chicken tomorrow. Don! Well, me. Welcome back to our adult version of Sesame Street. Uh, we have returned. Yes, Joy. I don't wish to seem rude, but it just occurred to all of us that while you are celebrating your 10th wedding anniversary, and rightfully so... Wedding, wedding anniversary? Wedding. <laughs> Somebody didn't tell you he never made the 10th. <laughs> I just wanted him to hear how it would sound. Oh! 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 If he ever got there. We are overlooking the fact that in these 10 years, beside training the horses for the beer, this fella here is also celebrating his 10th wedding Absolutely. anniversary with you. What is wedding Doc anniversary? No, no Doc's Yes, not. Doc's been with the Tonight Show for 10 years. Two years. Tommy oh, yeah. Newsom's been, been with us 38 years. <laughs> but he doesn't know it. No. Jack and I have been together 55 years. Who? Right. Jack and I. George and I. And nobody gave us a highlight. <laughs> Ed, what's your highlight? Right here, the same thing. 10 years, our anniversary. You see? You know, I've been here 10 years. And, you, and you've been a strong, tremendous force to help the show go over the top. And I don't, I don't have to bring out the other two Gentiles. All right. Yes, we have. <laughs> the other we could two... use a couple of Gentiles. Okay. Bearing now, two Gentiles. No, we can't do that. People won't understand. Uh, would you welcome Dan Rowan and Dick Martin? Welcome to Benet Brith. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, John. Thank you, Dan. Thank we just closed in your old place in Vegas last night. Sahara, Sahara, Sahara Hotel. Nice. And it's, uh, they're missing you there. Yes. Town is just not the same They're waiting you for there. your return. Are they really? Indeed. Yeah. They've told us you sold your house. Yes. yes. That's good. You made a lot of money, huh, John? No. That's good. No. <laughs> Did make a lot of money? You know, we were doing, uh, you haven't done anything political tonight, right? No. And we didn't intend to do anything political, but a kind of a strange thing happened when we were there in July. We were there in July. Uh, July the hot. Oh, God. <laughs> 117. Yeah, we were there when the record was set. Mm. And that's a thrill in Las Vegas. 117 degrees and the biggest fun you can have. Grabbing your steering wheel. Yeah, well, it's just... <laughs> 
or unless you got leather upholstery. It's a ha ha ha. Ah. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. Yeah. Well, anyway, it was during the during that period of time, just before the uh, Democratic convention. Yes. And one night on stage, we were rapping, and I mentioned McGovern's name, and a few people applauded, a few people booed. So we said, "Hey, tell you what, let's uh, see how it's going to go down there in Miami." So we had a uh, survey, Little and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and oddly enough, McGovern, of course generally was ahead, but the guy who ran second to him most of the time was Governor Wallace. It's true. Had a lot of supporters. In Muskie didn't do too good, does no, he? No, he didn't do well at all. Colonel Sanders beat him four nights in a row. And uh, so what we were doing this last time, we were running a, um, a survey again to see how it's going to go in November, because McGovern has his running mate That's now. That's right, he has yeah. a and, fellow uh, out of the Army. <laughs> He's not in the army. Sergeant Shriver? Well, that's, that's his name. He's, that's not his rank. You don't name a boy sergeant. Well, I don't name... You name a police dog sergeant. Yeah, no, well, that's his... <laughs> boy sergeant. His name is Sergeant. It's, it's, a, it's an old Yankee name, Sergeant okay. Shriver. So it's, the lines are drawn, right? right. It's uh, McGovern, Shriver against Nixon well, Agnew. Okay. And if you don't mind, John, if we could borrow your audience, we'd okay. like to uh, take a little poll and... Uh, could See, we have a little poll come up here? Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> you know what I mean. How about a big He'll Armenian? He'll get the letters. <laughs> we won't get the letters. He'll get them. Uh, no. What, what we'd like to do is just see, because these people come from all over the country, that's right? That's true. Oh, yes. See how it's going to go in November. Okay. Uh, we'll mention the two leading candidates, because that's your choice, right? right. You only get the two. And uh, when we name the guy of your choice, if you'll applaud, we'll see how it's going to go okay. in November. Okay. See if right. they're the same right. as the haircut. All right. All right. All of those of you in favor of the next president of the United States being Senator George McGovern, applaud now. There may be some uncommitted. You better get uh, Colonel Sanders Just, out. Yes. Uh, <laughs> He's running good. All right, those of you in favor of re-electing President Nixon, applaud now. We have just saved the government $2 billion. Well, I, they're not going to take decided that. decided right. right here. Old Dick did it again. Well, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Old Dick rammed well, it. Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't care what your politics are. You don't call the president of the United States Old Dick. He's the president. We've known yeah. him for 20 I years. I don't care how long we've known him. You don't call the president Old Dick. He was a regular on our show. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> you talk to him, it's Mr. President. How about Mr. Dick? <laughs> Mr. From the minute a man is elected to that office, he is called Mr. President, his most intimate friends, Mr. President, never anything else. From the day he's elected till the day he dies, if Harry Truman takes a walk around the block, mm. good morning, Mr. President. That's Same it, uh, thing with Johnson. Good mm. morning, Mr. President. Mm. Late at night upstairs? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I suppose Mrs. Nixon calls him whatever she used to call him. I don't know. <laughs> Tricky Dick. All right. <laughs> if you just you can learn a little respect for people in high office. You're talking about highlights. Our highlight was this year. The very first time that what's his name and I were ever. We're, we're ever invited to London, the Queen of England. You guys have all done it. It was our first command performance. That's true. They, and I was never so embarrassed in my life. You know, you guys know what happens. After the show's over, the curtains close. The Queen is sitting up there, the royal party. She's a nice-looking lady. I'll tell her you said so. The curtain closes. A little hippie, but... All right. <laughs> now, when the show is over, the curtain closes, the Queen, the royal party come downstage. And, and they walk, and you shake hands, and everyone tells you in front what to do. You know, the wives are there with the white gloves, and everybody knows the protocol. <laughs> Prince Philip walks by, and this ding-dong curtsies. <laughs> he kissed my hand. He did not kiss my hand. He looks at him, and he says, hi, king. Now, don't you figure he's the king? He's married to the queen, well, right? Well, doesn't make him the Those queen. king, queen, jack, ten, and nine. All... <laughs> We have to, we have to take a break here. I don't blame you. Uh, <laughs> too bad you guys didn't come in with some material. <laughs> we'll, uh, we weren't going to fool around. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> <after> <laughs> <and> say, happy <laughs> yep, they've finally done it. What have they done, Ed? They've named a car after me. You mean they call it the Silly Savage? No, no, no. They call it the Sportabout. Well, I was close anyway. American Motors Hornet Sportabout. Now, isn't she a beauty? Not too big, just comfortable. 
It's so easy to handle, even the doctor can drive it. And it's got a big standard six-cylinder engine that leaves the other little wagons behind. And you know what else, Doc? Tell me more, Sport. The Sportabout has more rear seat legroom than any small U.S. economy wagon. And inside, there's loads of cargo space, too. Yeah, I can see that. And only American Motors makes this promise. The buyer protection plan backs every 73 car we build. And we'll see that our dealers back that promise. American Motors Corporation, we back them better because we build them better. What's the name of this car again, Ed? The uh, Sportabout, Doc. American Motors Hornet Sportabout. Here is a lovely lady and a fine, fine entertainer, Miss Dinah Shore. This Oh, I'm close. Yeah. How are you? I, I'm absolutely fine. I, uh, you know, I was so excited. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank that you. really is exciting. And I was so delighted when Freddie De Cordova told me that I was going to be the only uh, girl on the show. You know. And then uh, Carol brought me out here, and I feel like one of the guys. <laughs> but she, you know what she told me? Before? She said uh, she's learned how to make the best stuffed cabbage in town from from, from your the, show. From my show. You really do all that cooking yourself? I certainly do. Great cook. We can testify to that. Yes, We've each done the show. Yes, that's yes. right. I, I didn't want to get onto my show. I'm that's really right. so thrilled and pleased to be a part of this evening. Really, it may come as a big shock to you, but Ephraim Zimbalist is not back there. <laughs> and I've been sitting in that green room um, all alone for a long time. Oh. And I mean, really alone. You cannot believe how lonely it can be. I know how Dick Cavett's got to feel at this moment. Oh. It's got to be. Or maybe he's like a, a Presbyterian friend. at Bridget and Bernie's wedding. I don't know. How you feel with it? All alone back there by yourself. If the alphabet is the way you presented the people, then I figure the only one that comes on after Dinah is Xerox. Xerox. That's right. They didn't have Zimbalist. Get the idea? Yes, that's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's not in all an alphabetical order because our last guest tonight will be the president of NBC Television, whom you all know, I'm sure, Mr. Don Durgan. Whom we all know and love. Whom we all know oh, and a fine Don Durgan. Right. When well, I had my show on NBC, I loved him, yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't have to love him. I'm, I'm a pinch hitter. That's right. <laughs> I could like him. It's good to love him. It's good to love him. I like him so six you... weeks a year. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we haven't heard your highlight. Uh, you heard us all talking about our highlights out here, and it seemed to be a oh, wonderful question. That's not fair. Well, I used, I used to be her highlight, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to, to refused to pose in the centerfold. <laughs> <laughs> Who refused? <laughs> you were rejected. Um, no, yeah. that's not, no, that's not, not just not fair, but, I, no. you know, you got married and everything. Oh, uh, that's I'm, true. Yeah, that's well, true. Ruined your whole image. Yeah. yeah. He just walks around now with a smile on his face all the time. Thinking of the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> Would you believe that, darling? Huh? Would you two like us to leave? <laughs> <laughs> to leave. No. I'm going to sit here until I Not... think of an ad lib. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John. You just got booked for the next 10 years. <laughs> I'm, I'm, if I can't think of anything funny, I'm not going to say anything. Okay. That's and I'll tell you when I think of something funny. Okay. My toe starts to move. <laughs> Go ahead, talk. <laughs> Keep an eye on his toes. But Better watch my toe, folks. <laughs> Better we should wait for his ad lib than... than no, me. no, no, I've got nothing to say. I, I'm lucky I'd if better. I can put my cigar into my holder. <laughs> I got a feeling it's going to end up in a rumble all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. uh, Remember what I said before? Yes. What time, how long have we got to go? Yeah. Well, only a, another five or six I, minutes. On I, I how many minutes? Six. Five or six, seven five minutes, or six. something like well, that. You, we can kill I'll, that in an hour. I'll sit here. <laughs> I'll sit here. I no. got a feeling we're all waiting for my the rabbi to... and the couple to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling that none of us are comedians. <laughs> What the hell is with the applause? Yeah. <laughs> Get a lot of this, Nuremberg 
trial. I hope. I saw you standing out there like, let's make a deal with your funny little outfit. I meant no harm. Yali. Hope I wasn't personal. Yali. Yes. I have to leave because I'm dressed not only to be here, I know you but have I to have go. to go someplace else. A funeral? Now, I think the fact that I came here to congratulate you, and you know how I love you, yes, and how I wish that you, this will go on for years and years and years. But in order for me to get something over the air, I want you to invite me to your house for dinner. October 17th. Now, ask me now if I can come to your house October 17th. All right. And then I'll have an answer for it. All right. I'd, I'd love to have you uh, join us for dinner October 17th at my house. Well, Johnny, I'm sorry I can't make it. <laughs> because that's the night that I'm opening in Houston, Texas. At the Houston Theater. Good night, John. Good night, John. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. See, I got this wire from NBC. We're going to take a break. We're coming back. We are back now. Yes. John. Yes, Diane. Diane has something to say. Excuse me. Uh, oh. I don't have to go. Right. Like Ladies and gentlemen. Wait a No. Houston, Texas, October 17th. <laughs> yes. Uh, despite anything Jack Benny says, uh, I would like you to invite me to your house for dinner on October the 20th of All right. this year. All right. <laughs> Did you come for dinner October the 20th of this year? Oh, I'm sorry I can't. Well, what are you doing? I'm doing a special on NBC television. <laughs> it was a, it was a way, how to handle a woman. I figured you'd be an authority, but I can't be here I, to find out. I see. I seem to be eating alone that night. <laughs> uh, would you welcome, uh, if Don Durgan comes out and says, invite me to dinner and can't come, it's all over. Here is the president of the NBC television network, Mr. Don Durgan. I welcome you. I thank you for joining us. Well, thank you, Johnny. Uh, you know, on this auspicious occasion, all of us at NBC wanted to uh, mark it with uh, a gift as unique as the accomplishment itself. And we gave a lot of thought to it. We had a number of ideas. One of our bright young executives had the thought of a factory fresh, reconditioned 1962 Edsel. Mm. <laughs> and then we had really a better idea, a silver plate engraving of the October 1, 1962 New York Times. We got the, uh, the Times out and looked at that front page. One of the stories on the front page was the Times had just uh, announced the opening of a Los Angeles edition on that day, which has since folded. We, we thought that wasn't as good. Uh, it also said that the Giants and the Dodgers had tied for the National League pennant that day, and the serious story was that Khrushchev had invited President Kennedy that day to come to Moscow to discuss uh, Berlin and the Berlin problem. So it, it seems so long ago that we came up with a different idea. If something from your first show, from the studio, uh, that would be unique, and that you might treasure. And Bill Trevarthen, our vice president in charge of operations and engineering, came up with it. And I have it right here. What it is, is the image orthicon tube from the camera that you first really? faced uh, that night as you came out in Studio 6B, looked at the camera, looked into this tube, and I believe you said, I want my mommy. Yeah. That's, you're ah, absolutely ah, ah. You are right. That's what. Oh. I have it right here. Is that for real? And I'll just read, if I may. Before the... you do it, let me sit down. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel very funny. 
I'll just read the plate. RCA image orthicon tube, serial number 1119, from one of the four original cameras in NBC Studio 6B, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York City, which telecast the first Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, October 1, 1962, presented to Johnny Carson on the occasion of his 10th anniversary as the star of Tonight, October 1, 1972. Johnny, on behalf of Julian Goodman, president of NBC.